In addition to its own internal clock and an external clock input, the Ultra Random Analog also has a random gate and pulse generator, and a partner in crime, an opto integrator, which is sort of a slew using a backdoor like device. So let's focus on that section in this movie. The internal clock goes at a steady pace. The random gate output goes at its own pace, not tied to that clock. For example, I'll temporarily take the random pulse output, connect it over to the yellow trace on the scope, and the clock output on our URA is connected to the magenta output. And you can see that they're looking completely different at this point. And even as I change the speed of the internal clock, it has no effect on the roughly average speed of that random gate output. I'll turn our clock down and actually I'll pull that from the circuit for now and use that pink trace to indicate what's happening with our random clock. You can see it with the LED here and also with the way that the waveform is jumping on the data. This random clock has a variety of densities or speeds you can think of it with several different ranges you can switch through. You can go all the way up to the audio rate. And to give you an idea what that sounds like, I'm actually going to take a copy of that clock's output, run it up to my external audio input for now, turn on my drone, put the mix over to external. As I can hear those little clicks there, at the edges of the gates, as I turn it up, kind of Geiger counter-ish, until we get to kind of like a digital chip noise sort of sound. Now this button divides the speed going into that random pulse generator by two every time you press it. It has seven levels of division. Every time you slow it down, you're going to drop the pitch of that noise by an octave, and you're also going to make it more regular and less noisy. For example, you're getting really into digital communication sounds there. Go up to audio rate. Finally, the last pulse division. For me, it always turns it completely off. I am yet to see a pulse come out when I'm at the slowest division here. But one more tap. Now we're back up to the fastest speed of this clock, producing noise. Let's pull down to the sub audio range. Again, I can use it as a Geiger counter sort of click, or let's use it to do something a bit more constructive. I'll switch over to internal VCO and instead of the noise in the Moog, our external oscillator. There's our nice drone. Let's pitch that down. This LED output and the display in the data shows you when the pulses are going high or going low. And you go from pretty active pulses to something a bit slower on that range. But rather than just watch it, let's patch it into something. So here's a copy of the pulse output. I'm going to take it to a trigger input on an envelope generator. And let's take the output of that envelope. Well, let's keep an eye on what it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and run it back through the data. See if I can keep that cord out of the way so you can see what's happening on the display here. And then let's take that output, run it through an attenuator, and then run that attenuated result into the filter cutoff. Increase the depth. Lower the cutoff. So you notice it's not just a trigger, it's also a gate that can hold it at that sustain level. Increase the depth a little bit. Pull down the cutoff. And start playing around with gate density. We can go even lower, which means the changes will happen a lot less often. And this is like watching paint dry, waiting for a trigger to happen. Holding the gate high. And it's going to take a while to release. Let's go ahead and increase that speed, where the density is, it says. Start getting more triggers happening. See how the starts of the envelopes line up with the triggers coming out of this pulse. So we go up to very high rates. Go all the way up to noise if you want. 
some of these pinging sounds can be pretty interesting. The random pulse density also has a control voltage input in addition to its knob. Now if we want it slower and less random, we press this pulse division switch to divide the rate by two, and it also becomes a bit more even. Again. We keep going down to the divisions. So we're very slow. And eventually, down to we're not getting any pulses at all anymore. And then one more pulse, fast speed again. Now you might have noticed this other LED next to the pulse output has also been changing colors every time the pulse goes high or low. That is what Steady State Fate calls an opto-integrator. An integrator is something that smooths out transitions over time. It's basically reacting to the pulse going high and low with this voltage slewing up high and slewing down low. So let's take a look at that voltage output. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the trigger from the envelope generator keep it on this pink line, those can still see what's going on, and instead grab an output from our opto-isolator here. Now watch what happens with the blue line in relation to the pink triggers. And I'll actually temporarily move this to yellow just so you can see more clearly. Whenever the trigger goes high, the opto-integrator output starts slowing up to the highest level as well. And notice it has an unusual shape, it has an unusual little hook there around the center line. That's very different than the normal slew or any envelope shape you normally get. I'll increase the density here. And whenever the pulse goes low, the opto-integrator starts falling back down to its lowest level. It defaults to a pretty slow integration time, but as you increase the integration slope, make it steeper, you get faster transitions. Now you can control the speed of that slope with an external voltage as well. It adds into what the knob's doing. Now you don't have to feed the random pulses through that opto-integrator. You can put any other control voltage through it. So just like we had a sample slew on sample level B, we can use the opto-integrator to smooth out sample level A. So I'm going to repatch sample and hold A into the opto-integrator's input. Now, whenever our green sample and hold output goes above the center line, the opto-integrator starts to rise up. Whenever it falls below the center line, the opto-integrator starts to fall down, and goes down to zero. Now the challenge with that is that the opto-integrator is expecting only positive voltage to hit it from this random gate. That's what it's optimized for. But our sample and hold is going positive and negative. So about half of what the sample hold is doing is not creating anything interesting out of the opto-isolator. What you need to do for any signal that you feed through this opto-isolator is perhaps boost it up in level so that it is in just the positive voltage range, just like the gate was, and then the opto-isolator can work on its entire range of voltages. To do this, I'm actually going to take the output of sample hold A, run it through the levitate using one channel to attenuate it and one channel to offset it so it's just a positive voltage. I feed it into that signal, submix these top four inputs, and bring that down to input one. Then keep this bottom offset to a positive voltage, invert off, and start offsetting the sample hold output above the center line. To up here somewhere. Finally, let's take that output and feed that into the opto integrator's input. And now you see that the opto integrator's output, which is the blue trace, is smoothing out the biased upward sample and hold output, which is the green trace. It's no longer using the random pulse output, so I'll even pull that for now so you don't see it. Now we'll focus just on these random smoothings of our sample and hold output. So it's like having an additional slew limiter as part of this module. 
but it has an unusual attack release shape, which makes it particularly interesting. You can make it a bit slower, so it's a bit smoother, or a bit faster, so it changes suddenly. So that's another nice little section of this module. 